Democracy is on the verge of collapse. From the rise of authoritarian politics to widespread resentment of public institutions, calls to alter the status quo can be found everywhere. While political analysts frequently use the term failed states to describe countries that are unable to sustain themselves, stuck states may be a more common phenomenon these days. Countries that remain functional but are not incapable of responding to our time's big challenges, that their long-term security is jeopardized. What if there's a new technology that could untangle our stuck politics and empower societies to design democracy? Well, some believe that Web 3.0 is our workable alternative. But what exactly is Web 3.0? Web 3.0 is a vision for the future of the internet that proposes a decentralized ecosystem based on blockchain technology. It would be a deviation from the centralized mega platforms and corporations that currently dominate the ecosystem, and Web3 advocates believe that it would fix what is wrong with today's internet while also reversing the erosion of democracy. Web3 is an exciting space for businesses, evolving from Web1.0 and Web2.0 with various opportunities to make money through decentralized advertising, NFTs, crypto tokens, and many more. Because of these incredible opportunities, investors continue to increase their bets on the success of Web3 startups. We anticipate that factors like remote work, digitalization, and globalization will lead the world to a world where Internet 3.0 is the norm in the future. Individuals will not only be able to own their data under Web 3.0, but they will also be compensated for their time spent on the Internet. It would be a departure from the centralized mega platforms and corporations that currently dominate the ecosystem, and proponents claim it would fix what's wrong with today's internet, while also reversing the erosion of democracy. Web 3.0 is also the most recent internet technology that uses machine learning, artificial intelligence, and blockchain to enable real-world human communications. A small handful of winners like Meta and Amazon are two of the technology industry's few champions, dominating the current closed and centralized ecosystem. They act as gatekeepers or intermediaries in people's digital lives in many ways because of the network effects of platforms that reach a critical mass of users. Competing against them is extremely difficult, even if a superior product is developed. People who want to fully participate in society are compelled to use these platforms. Their recommendation systems Product features and community guidelines profoundly shape what content people consume in their daily lives, and the actors who figure out how to use them most effectively wield disproportionate power. A centralized ecosystem also implies that these gatekeepers can collect and involve massive amounts of individual data in ways that individual users have limited control over. Such an environment is defenseless against abuse, as found like in the cases like Cambridge Analytica scandal, data leaks, and plans of action based on access to users' data for micro-targeted advertising. Under this model, platforms feel pressure to design their services in ways that maximize user engagement and tracking. And those design choices do not always align with what is best for democratic values or the public good. Web 3.0 defenders assert that it introduces structural changes that render the inherent problems of the current online ecosystem largely obsolete. Platforms and apps built on Web3 will be owned by users rather than a central gatekeeper. This is enabled by its blockchain infrastructure, which is the same technology that underpins cryptocurrencies. There will be no need for large privately owned data centers in Web3.0. Instead, data will be securely stored and distributed across many devices. Anyone with the means and specialized knowledge can turn their device into a hub in this framework because data is no longer stored centrally. Such a design reduces the risk of massive data leaks. The embedded encryption is another key benefit of Web 3.0's blockchain infrastructure, according to proponents. Because data is stored on a blockchain, only those with permission can access it. People will be able to control their own data rather than relying on big tech to treat data with integrity. This eliminates the possibility of platforms or governments accessing data without the owner's explicit consent. If the government sends a takedown or data access request to a Web 3.0 platform, it may be technically impossible to comply. Web 3.0 could also weaken platform network effects and return power to users. Currently, network effects assist platforms in maintaining a critical mass of users, making it difficult for potential rivals to compete against them. Twitter-funded projects like PPeth, 
and Blue Sky may be able to correct this imbalance. If Blue Sky's protocol is successful, it will create a decentralized social layer of the internet that allows users to seamlessly port their data and followers between platforms, creating an environment where developers can freely build communities, can self-govern, and users can easily switch services. This new social layer has the potential to usher in a new era of online generativity. Consider a social media landscape with thousands of interconnected boutique platforms, each designed with the values of their members in mind rather than the profits or missions of their corporate owners. So how would Web 3.0 revitalize democracy and break the deadlock? Web 3.0 supporters believe it has the potential to revitalize democratic values on both the internet and in society. It is argued that the Web 3.0 iteration of the internet will be structurally more democratic and free than what came before. The security and privacy provided by blockchain technology, which underpins Web 3.0, could serve as an undisputable check on government overreach or restraint. Its decentralized engineering will advance people's rights over generally powerful entertainers by giving clients more control over how they interact on the web. The one-person, one-vote principle of equal representation would allegedly be built into the design of Web 3.0, with a token model powering its applications. Many go even further claiming that Web 3.0 standards can be used to shape our disconnected lives, redesigning social orders to overcome political gridlock. Decentralized autonomous organizations, that is DAOs, are one such model. DAOs are portrayed as democratized, part-owned, and web-based local associations with no integrated initiative. When members of a DAO are debating an authoritative decision, each party can make a proposal and then vote on it with administration tokens, or they can represent another party and use their tokens to decide for them. When a basic larger part of the part-held administration tokens necessitates a decision, it is naturally carried out. An incredible thing is that at any stage of the interaction, there's no need for a progressive design or a trusted mediator. DAO supporters believe that this organization model will eventually replace deadlocked and corrupt governments. This is due to the fact that its structure produces what they refer to as liquid democracy, which is an ideal combination of agents in a majority rules government and direct majority rules system that can be applied at scale. Residents will no longer have to rely on a potentially corrupt politician to represent their best interests or worry about popular legislation being blocked from a vote. Instead, the DAO's code automatically enacts the majority view of its members. While Web 3.0 is intended to be structurally decentralized, some metrics indicate the opposite. Wealth and power over some Web 3.0 technologies are concentrated in the hands of a few. According to a 2021 study from the National Bureau of Economic Research, the top 0.1% of Bitcoin miners control close to half of all mining capacity, and the distribution of Ethereum is not much different. According to research, the majority of the gains from additional Bitcoin adoption are likely to fall disproportionately to a small set of participants. Another apparent contradiction to the ideal of a decentralized web is the use of centrally owned cloud data storage services like Amazon and Microsoft to host a large number of blockchain nodes. Amazon Web Services, for example, hosts 25% of all Ethereum workloads. Furthermore, similar to today's web, Web 3.0 crypto and NFT ecosystems are already concentrating around a few large platforms. Platforms like OpenSea and Coinbase are having tremendous success in mediating much of Web 3.0 experience for millions of people. We've come to the end of this, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching, please do well to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button too.